Okay. Well, it looks like we are live. Let's see. Oh, we are live. <laughs> hey, everyone. Hello there. Hello there. Thanks for joining. This is Nadine White from The Sophisticated Life. And we are here um, for Rose Happy Hour. I am joined by Tish and Joni, and we are going to be talking about all things Rose Wines today. I'm going to have the ladies introduce themselves first. But for those of you that are joining me for the first time, again, I'm Nadine from The Sophisticated Life. And uh, my blog covers travel, food, and wine. And since I have not been able to travel much, I've just been drinking rosé at home. <laughs> but I decided to have a happy hour. I think we could all have a little bit of fun. Um, in terms of my wine journey, I've been blogging about wine for years and years. Um, travel to a wine regions all over the world. And this summer, actually, I took a wine course to get my first wine certification. So I have to take that exam because my goal is to visit all the wine regions in the world. And hopefully one day I'll be taking you guys along with me on some wine trips. So exploring food and wine and just really getting to know the world through their um, culinary scene. So that is my hope and dream one day to do that. Um, so yes, I'm going to have the ladies introduce themselves. I have some John Legend LVE uh, champagne here that my husband just poured. I'm going to get the bottle to show you guys. So cheers. All right. <laughs> yes. We're going to talk all about rosé for the next 30, 40 minutes. <laughs> I know Joni. I know Joni. Yeah, Joni's in the medical profession like myself. And so <laughs> I'm so happy that she could join us and tell us about herself and her brand because it's fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> and we're going to pick for her. <laughs> I know my oh, imaginary rosé, Joni. <laughs> so tell us about yourself. So my name is Joni Riles. I am the founder and CEO of Seek and Sip Travel. Basically, we travel the world searching for the perfect sip. Oh. Um, I am also on my way to becoming um, a, a WSET Level 3 certified wine educator. So Yay. my goal is to educate uh, our people and just anyone who's interested in wine just to elevate your knowledge a little bit more, kind of understand the, the language of wine, if you will, and then um, take you along on the journey with me as I travel the world. So it's uh, funny because Nadine and I have, uh, we're really similar, both in the medical yes. field, both love wine. I'm a yes. beginner blogger, so I'm a baby blogger. I'm trying my hand at that now too. So it's very interesting, but thank yes. you so much for welcoming me. Awesome, I love it. Thanks for joining, it's exciting. Hello, <laughs> Joni. Stephanie's here. Hi, Stephanie. Hey. Oh, thanks for joining. I love Stephanie's session with Tish where they made wine cocktails. That was awesome. Yeah, Tish has the yeah. best lives ever. Yeah. So Tish, tell us about yourself. All right. I am Tish Wiggins, affectionately known as Tish Around Town. Um, I also have a brand, too, that... Um, I love to basically um, explore food and wine. Um, Tish Around Town started in Atlanta um, about six years ago. It was actually, I just had my anniversary earlier this oh, week. Oh, congrats. Um, um, I had a chance to meet Nadine actually at one of my first events I was planning. Yes. So I enjoy planning events centered around food, wine, and spirits. And then I also like to plan events that actually educate too. So um, I currently host an event called Chat and Sip that kind of came out as part of COVID, um, where we actually bring in um, different individuals in the drinks industry, whether they're wine or whether they're spirits, um, have live tastings, uh, demonstrations like Nadine referenced. We had a cocktail, you know, how to prepare and do wine cocktails. And that was a demonstration done by Stephanie Love from Epicurious One. Um, shout out, because she's on the line today. Yeah. And, uh, and then, you know, we've had different uh, people to come in and do live wine tasting. So that's been very fun. But um, and for my education and my love for wine, and I always try to say that my entanglement with wine actually started, um, you know, about 20 years ago, actually, like when I was oh, wow. love with wine. But then at the same time, probably in the last five years, I really decided that wine is where I want to be and wine is what I want to learn and wine is what I want to share. So I have my W set too. Um, and I'm and I am on the journey to be a certified SOM. So some LA. So I am um, now awesome. in the process of studying for my intro to SOM, 
which I will take in the October, November time frame. And hopefully by this time next year, I'll be preparing to get ready to take my certified. So. That is awesome. I love it. Love it. So. And Glenda is, is on here from Bermuda. She's a fellow travel blogger. Every time I see her pictures, I'm like, she's quarantining in Bermuda. Tough life. <laughs> I'm oh, so jealous. We don't like Brenda. her. I'm so we jealous. Like her. <laughs> no. I'm like, I've only been an hour and a half from Atlanta since this whole thing started. So yes. Yeah, so yes, we're all on different wine journeys, but obviously we all love wine. And so that's why I wanted to ask these ladies to join me for this. So we're going to jump right in. So the reason I decided to do Rosé, obviously it's summertime. Um, so I know people have been drinking a lot of rosé and I plan to kind of do this at the beginning of the summer, but you know, life, but it's still summertime, still lots of time to drink rosé wines. Um, and so I did write a blog post that I published yesterday, Rosé Wine 101, an introduction to rosé wines, because I find that a lot of people drink it, but don't really know much about it. Uh, there's some misconceptions about it. I think for a while people like poo pooed rose and thought it was just like for girls or, you know, it wasn't sophisticated, but I think mm -hmm. it's turned around completely. And now it's like sophisticated, everybody's drinking it. You know, you go on summer vacation to the Hamptons or wherever and people are drinking lots of rose wine. So I just want to kind of run through some basics about it. Um, and at the end, just so people know that are tuning in, there will be some trivia. And I do have some giveaways, <laughs> some fun giveaways for people who either read the blog post or will be paying attention to this. So first, I just wanted to kind of go over how rosé wines are made, um, mm -hmm. because obviously it's kind of like an in-between red and white. So I think some people may think that, you know, you just mix the two together and you get rosé wine. Um, but we know that's not the case. And so um, there's three methods that are commonly used and the maceration method is the most common method that's used. Um, and so I wanted to kind of talk about that a little bit. And we've traveled all over the world, the three of us. So um, we're kind of familiar with that. Um, and then, but we, the blending method is used in champagne. And I know, Joni, you've been to champagne. Um, yeah. Tish, I'm not sure if you've I been to have not been to Champagne yet. I have yeah. had that pleasure and honor. So I've had to live through Joni and a few yes. other of my friends and other fellow bloggers too. So yes, we, we're yes. already working on it, girl. As soon as the world opens up, we're out. Oh <laughs> I absolutely love, love, love. I only got to spend a day there, but it was a beautiful, beautiful um, day trip. So if you go to Paris, it's an easy day trip from Paris. Yeah. Uh, for people who want to go there. So in Champagne, they actually will use a little bit of red wine and add it to white wine. And that's one of the places where you will have that, that blending method that's used. But most of the time, it's the maceration method where you use red grapes to make rosé wines. And so basically, depending on how long the skins uh, macerate or sit with the juice, it's where you get the pink color. But rosé wines are actually usually from red grapes. So people don't really realize that. And the juice is light pint to dark pint, depending on how long the juice sits with the grapes and the stems. Um, so that's important for people to know. So then they're drinking it and the flavors are coming from the type of, and look, Tish is showing us the different colors. Yes, <laughs> I definitely want to get to that because people wonder, why are there so many different shades of pink? Um, so tell us what you had there, Tish, because look at how dark and light those two different rosés are. <laughs> okay, so first right here, I actually have the Gerard uh, Bertrand, which mm. is one of my favorites. It's an easy drinking, it's a patio pounder, the whole nine. <laughs> I love um, that patio pounder. Typical, yeah. uh, you know, typical Provence style rosé. You're gonna get that salmon peak color. So it. It, it's just beautiful. So then, this is a Terval. This is a Terval rosé. Yes. So yes. this it looks is like a red one hundred percent Grenache grapes. And mm -hmm. in this region, in this particular region, they can they only make rosé. Exactly. And at the same time, it's a very. It's like to me, it will be considered like a heavy body rosé because it it looks the way it looks. It's actually it's quite intense too. At the same yes. time, compared to. The light, the light color. I'm trying to make sure I'm in the camera. So to compare it to the uh, to the lighter color, your typical kind of salmon color. And then I think when you start to get into like the rosés that are in like um, like here in the United States, and you do like an Oregon rosé, it's a little bit darker than this, 
but lighter than this one. You, you know, so they kind of sit in the middle. You, you know, the, the ones made in the states. States I feel sit in the middle, but I think we are also starting to see that you you kind of you kind of can't really tell where the rosés are coming from by color because I think some of the winemakers are kind of playing with the color now too, and they're not, mm. they're not as traditional as they've been before. So we, they're trying to they're trying to trick us a little bit. But right. um, but yes, this the the Travol it's amazing. It's it's very it's very it's very interesting because it's um, it, it drinks like I say it drinks very heavy. <laughs> right. I was about to say, how do you like it? I've never had it. Style. Yeah, compared to the Provence style drinks, heavy, but it's very very like this one is a lot of strawberry, cherries, mm. all of your fruits, very fruit forward. Um, and also this is one like, you know, usually you're gonna only keep a rosé like one to two years. This mm. is one you can actually keep for a few years because mm. of the grapes and stuff. So because oh, it's, it's, it's actually pretty good, but it is different and it's heavier, but I also it's kind of young still too. So it actually can sit for a little bit longer. And I think it'll open up and be great. So, and which is different than most rosés that you buy that you're supposed to just mm -hmm. drink when you buy them. When you pick it up, you need to drink it. So, drink yeah. it. that actually is really um, teetering because the traditional uh, mm -hmm. rosé, I guess the godfathers and godmothers of rosé, actually feel like it should that's red wine. Right, it shouldn't exactly. be considered rosé at that point. It's such a so, huge debate. <laughs> oh, and also, too, I'm going to tell you also, too, why your, your tears, your legs are jumping and all of that stuff. 14.5 alcohol. Percent alcohol. Yes. Yes. Oh. Versus, versus yeah. this is 12. You, this is like 12 and a half. So you're going to be looking at 12 and a half to 13 and a half tops on most rosés. 12 to 13 and a half. So this 14 and a half. When I first opened it, I really felt the alcohol. It's been open for a little while, so right. I don't, I didn't, I don't feel it straight on taste. But at first, I was like, Ooh. Uh, <laughs> but, but fourteen and a half. Yes. You can feel it. You feel it. And you can see, you can tell, Johnny by the. <laughs> you guys can see the tears. So yeah, yeah that's not my. There's another. Um, there's another. Uh, a, a wine geek that actually that's his trick. That's his parlor trick. He can look at the, um, the stems and tell you how much ABV is in. That's not my trick. I don't. I just drink it, so that's not me. <laughs> so people are wondering, though, depending on the color. Obviously, yes, like we were saying, people play around with that, and it depends on how long the juice is sitting with the stems and the the um, and the type of grape and how long all of that sits together to make the different colors. Mm -hmm. um, and I do want to mention, because we're talking about the different colors. So this is a Provence uh, Rosé. This is sparkling. This is John Legend's uh, sparkling LVE. And so I did want to mention that too. Charles is on and he says he loves to veil the um, rosé that Tish is drinking. Hi, Charles. <laughs> who has Charles Springfield, who has a book, a whole entire book on rosé wines that I referenced in my blog post actually, um, that I can't wait to get in the mail. How exciting. Um, and so, yeah, so that's one thing I also wanted to mention that people will say, well, what type of rosé should I get? I, you know, I want to try them out. It depends on, do you like dry? Do you like sweet? Do you like still wines? Do you like sparkling wines? And so you have to take that into consideration. You should also take into consideration what type of wine in general you usually like. Do you like Pinot Noir? You know, do you like Grenache? Do you like, you know, Syrah? And so you also should kind of go with what great varietal you usually will buy because the rosé will be kind of like a lighter, fruit, fruitier version of that great varietal. And so, you know, it's hard for me to just throw out recommendations, but if people just want to try it, I will say get a rosé from Provence. So, I mean, they make the most and high quality, whether they're expensive or cheap, let's say. Um, so I will usually recommend that, but I love personally sparkling rosés. And so I will usually buy those for myself. Um, but yeah, you should really consider it in terms of they come in all different types, you know? And so what was shocking to me, I want to say how funny this was. I was on the cruise a few years ago and I had ordered, I, I told the guy, just, you know, pour me whatever you have in terms of rosés. He came to the, um, the table with white Zinfandel. And I was like, oh! You know, because I drank that when I was like 20 in college. <laughs> I, was, I was like, I'm not drinking white Zinfandel. I asked for a rosé. And 
yeah, that was when I realized that was a rosé. And I think, you know, like a lot of people don't realize that. I just thought that was a cheap wine that I drank in my 20s. And I'm not drinking that now. But that is a rosé from the Red Zinfandel grape. So it's just a sweet rosé. Um, so when they made sweet, so yeah, but that, when, when they made sweeter, so yeah, right, exactly, exactly. But yeah, so you kind of have to decide. And I wanted to show myself this is probably the lightest rose I've ever seen. This is from Washington State. I went last summer, and this is actually a Grenache rose, 100% yeah. Grenache, which is a very unusual color. It looks like a white wine, yep. Yeah, but, but that's that's traditional. If you if you're thinking of uh, Pro, um, Provencal uh, wines, that's traditional all the way. It, yeah. it should be almost clear. Like I've had some that looks like water. There's wow. almost no um, color to it at all. This is unreal. This is yeah. This is the lightest I've ever seen. So I haven't actually tried it yet. This is a really nice. Um, actually, Julia Coney recommended this winery to me in uh, Walla Walla, Washington. Yeah, Kima Valley actually is where they are. Um, so I'm excited to try that. And because again, this is much lighter as you can tell compared to what Tish had. Um, so yes, yeah, so I wanted to uh, kind of talk about that. Obviously, rosé should be chilled, right? We want to drink it cold, yeah. 50 to 60 degrees. <laughs> Perfect for the summer, but I, I'm an all day rosé all year round. Type yeah. of thing, so. I actually drink it all throughout the year. And I even I know that the um the winemakers and vendors over the years mm -hmm. have been, you know, putting out more rose, mm -hmm. you know, even in the wintertime, because you can go down to the wine sections and it's still a rose section in the wintertime. You know, you right. said, no, it wasn't. I mean it'd be like one or two, three or four, but now it's still a whole rose section. So right. I do and this is great exactly. Yeah. It pairs well with so many different foods. So, and as we were talking about, you have the lighter ones and you have the darker, heavier ones. So you can have it with charcuterie and cheese and light foods, or you can have the heavier ones you can have with meat, barbecue. Um, I am very like mentally like summer, white rosé, winter, heavy reds. So I think I have to kind of branch out from that. Yep. <laughs> Because I don't even know. I rarely drink red wine in the summer unless I'm having, like, I had red wine the other night with pasta and red meat. But usually in the summer, I'm all about rosé and white wine. Um, and that's, the same, that's the same for me, too. I usually, right. because I, I'm living in Texas, I'm hot. I'm right. H-O-T <laughs> sizzling. So red wine is only for me for pairing for a particular meal. And it's a glass. Uh, or, or two, but but that's it because it's it's too hot. It's hot in Texas, yeah. But I do yeah. take my rosé all the way around the year, all the oh, way. Yeah. All yeah. 365 days, I'm always drinking rosé. I love it. So, what about you, Joey? So, I mean, I, traditionally, yes, I've always um, usually my rosé. I live in Chicago, so my rosé previously sipping would stop maybe around August, September. I would say August, you know, because mentally you're checked out you're getting ready for fall but now um what i found is number one you can find some really good deals on rosé in your uh, neighborhood wine shops that carry like a, a variety of rosés right. because they call them like end of bin or end of season wines so mm. that's when they kind of start putting them on sale now that's historically now moving forward because now we're understanding that you can drink rosé all throughout the year now so it might not be as a, you know good of a deal, but I right. know previously, like my my local one, they would put everything on sale, and okay. I would just grab, grab, grab. So, and I don't necessarily. I'm gonna qualify that and say it depends on the style of the winemaker, mm -hmm. and it just that it depends on the quality, um, whether or not you can store it. Because personally, if it's just a regular. Um, average bottle of rosé just drink it don't even worry about keeping it because as it ages it's going to lose the fruit right and right. it's going to kind of get a little bit flat kind of musty in taste if you will and right. so you'll lose the essence of what made you love that wine and see when I was going through my stash and I found this this is a 2018 so I need to drink it yeah <laughs> I don't just drink it you yeah got, you, got, you, got, you got to drink that one sis Yes, exactly. And it's already very light too, so you right. that one. Yeah, because remember when they released it, 
Um, if that's a 2018 and you bought it, what, last year, is that 2019? Mm -hmm. The winemaker right. meant for you to go ahead and drink it. I'll drink it last year. Yeah, yeah, I'm really bad about that. I'll, like, put stuff away, and then I'm like, oh, I didn't realize I have this. So, yes, I bought some goat cheese, and I bought some other soft cheeses, and I'm going to drink that one. I actually went to the grocery store, and I bought so many different ones today. This is from the Prisoner Wine Company that's from California. One. Love yeah. that one. Love Have you heard that one? Yes, that's a good okay. one. I'm shackled, so I'm excited about that. Yes. And I actually, once in a while, I like, I've never had this one, but I actually like sweet wines occasionally. So this is an Italian Moscato Rosé. Put the bottle. Is that the Barracuda? Yes. Yeah. That's oh, a crowd no, pleaser. Far that's a crowd pleaser. Pleaser. Okay. Yeah, so I'm excited because, you know, I, again, there was an article recently about Moscato and how that had become like a bad negative word, but I still like sweet wines on occasion. Though again, it's a sweet rosé, sparkling. I'll take it. Moscato <laughs> is amazing. The problem with Moscato is that we don't get the good stuff here. Right. Um, Italy keeps their Moscato diasti for the most part for themselves. You would never see the higher quality. I had some really good Moscato when I was over there. And exactly. I mean, Nadine, you've been to Italy before. So yes. it, it's, you know, you already know that they keep, and yeah. that's just the truth with a lot of winemaking regions, especially France, they keep the good stuff for themselves and they import, they export the rest. So we kind of get what they feel like will sell, you know, to us, but you got, that's why I, I, that's one of the reasons why I formed my company because mm. it's a million times better when you go over there and you're sipping the wine in the vineyards from the winemaker's personal barrel or, okay. and it's just, it's no feeling like it. It's really amazing. And you get a chance to stuff your suitcases like I do in France yes. and don't pay those other yes. charges. I had a delicious Moscato in Iceland that was amazing at the Blue Lagoon mm. restaurant. And I took pictures of the bottle because I'm like, oh my God, I can't, I'm going to have to buy this when I got home. They don't sell it in America. So yeah. I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm not having that. I have to wait till I go back to Italy and, like you said, pack up my suitcase with it. Um, mm -hmm. Just like, yeah, in Germany, and I was drinking Rieslings all over the place. And they, they said the same thing you said that in America, people like just the sweet Rieslings, and in Germany, they drink the dry Rieslings. But America has a market for the sweet Rieslings, and so they keep all their really good dry Rieslings in Germany. And I was like, well, it's a crime. It's a crime. It's a crime. It's exactly a crime. <laughs> um, but yes, let me ask you guys, because people always do ask, what are your favorite um, rosés that you will grab or pick up whenever you go to your store? Do you have any favorites? So, you want to go? I um I'm starting to get a little bit more adventurous with the rosés. I recently <laughs> discovered a um a Portuguese a Portugal rosé. Um, I know I sent it to you, by Orlando. Yes, yes, you did. Um, you can find it in most of your Whole Foods. It's usually in the um, oh, no. Spanish, the Spain Portugal section at the bottom. It's the Orlando um, Vino okay. Verde region. Yeah, it's really good. Okay. Um, it's a another. It's a crowd pleaser. It's a kind of semi semi dry. It's not too sweet on okay. the palate. Um, and it has that frizzante to it, so that kind of gives you a little mm -hmm. lift and kind of cools you off. Yes. So it's great um, for hot weather. That's one. Um, as far as the champagne, I am a Laurent Perrier girl. Uh, you so. Say that. That's my go-to every time. Oh. I'm feeling fancy and want something good. Right <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um, Gerard Bertrand, um, Bertrand rather. So my right. French is a little that's bit that's rusty. Right. I'm trying to, I'm working on it though. Um, that's another one <laughs> yes, for most of your stores. It. That's a good one. Yep, with a pretty bottle. And it's a beautiful yes. bottle too. It is. Yeah, it's, it's pretty. Yes. So those I love are like it. my three um, go tos. Uh, oh, one more. So my friend usually uh, just turned me on to a new one out of um, Bandol, France. So yeah, Bandol, France is a subsection of mm. Provence, France, mm. and the uh, maker, the winemaker, is called Domaine Tempier. It is a traditional Provencal, Provencal style uh, rosé wine. It's very light. But what's different yeah. about it is that it's a 50% Mouved blend. And mm, then oh, do the other 50%, I believe, is Grenache with the. Wow. Oh. I haven't seen that with 50%. Wow. Because that's a, you, basically, that's a 50 50. Is that, did it, did it, did, did the, uh, was it a little bit heavy? 
Was it give you a little medium to full body feel, or was it still light being from Provence? No, it's it it sips. It's very light body, just like a traditional um, Provencal rosé. But the difference Ooh. is with the um, Mouved varietal, you're gonna get a little bit more of the. Um, I I like to say a little bit more weight on it. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So you're gonna get the um, drink a little bit, heavy. the little bit of the 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 spice. Um, the being cherry kind of comes through a little bit more in there. So it's very deceiving because if you look at it, it's super light. But then when you sip it, you're getting some really good notes in there. So that's okay. a good one. It's a fancier one. I am going to have to look for that. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen one with that percentage before. In terms oh, yeah. Of yeah. It's that. totally different. And then I okay. realized why I liked it because I said I love the uh, varietal um, Mouved. I love it. So. Okay. Nice. And I actually have two more I'm going to grab to show people. This one is actually really delicious. I'm going to grab the bottle to show people. Yeah. How about so you? Sad. I can't show you guys, but I'm at work. Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, we, and we need you sober, sis. You, you, you yes, are in the medicine world. We need you yes. more sober. <laughs> we're, 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 we're just sipping your, we're just, we're just sipping your well, presence. <laughs> It's all good. I'll send Anadia and I'll just send you screenshots of the labels. And if you want to yeah. post them, whatever you can. Absolutely. Absolutely. What do you think, Tish? So some of my favorites, she basically talked about the one that I'm sipping on tonight, which is like one of my go-tos. And like I said, yeah. beautiful flower at the bottom. I love it. It's a beautiful bottle. And then it's one of the it's one of the glass stopper bottles. So you can also you know, transition and use it for a water bottle later on down the line. That's a good idea. So that's always fun with the glass stopper bottles. Because I know um, the LV brand, it has that too on their yeah. side. So yeah. That's always something you, you know, you can always use. And then um, I love like my favorite rosé that's out of Oregon made with the Pinot Noir grape is Love Drunk. Yeah. I mean, I mean I'm good. Yeah. Joni had actually listed as one of her favorites too. On yeah. I, mean, I saw her post earlier this week. That is like hands down so probably my favorite. So I drank the I, I had the last bottle on Saturday, and I was like, "Dang it! I meant to save it for here, but then I already went <laughs> online to order three more bottles because you know." I was about to say I kept. I don't find it often, so yeah, I need to order I some. Ordered online. I, I, I kind of just keep. I, that's the one that I. That's the. That's probably the only rosé that I continue that I've ordered like three times this summer. Don't. Don't. No judgment on here. But <laughs> no, I, I, like I made a few orders. orders this summer, so. <laughs> So for those of you listening, that's Mason Noir Wines. It's a Black-owned brand by Andre Houston Mack. Um, love, love his wines. Based out of Oregon, specializes in Pinot Noir. I've met him, which um, he's just so down to earth. Yeah, I definitely I started a series on my blog called the Black Winemaker Series. He was the first one that I wrote about in that series, and I ended up just writing about different Black winemakers. But uh, after meeting him, that like inspired me to to write that um, that article because yeah, he was really cool. And he has, he even wrote a book. I have this book um, over there, ninety nine bottles, and there's another part to that title. But yes, so he makes amazing wines. Yeah. So so that that's like a favorite, and I actually have connected with another um, rosé that's out that's made with a Pinot Noir grape, and it's it's called Robert. It's called Samuel Robert. Oh, okay. Um, and it, and it, and I and, and it's a, a it may be a wine direct with total wine, so it may only be a total wine. Okay. Oh my god, it that's the one that I just continue to kind of just be like, okay, I'm getting, I'm getting it. Okay, let me grab this too. You know, I'm getting yes. it, just grab that one too. So it's just <laughs> one of the one of the kind of kind of staples in the house too. Um, Love it. Don't drink a lot of uh, bubbles just in general. You know, mm -hmm. I'm slowly but surely coming on over to the champagne world. I know that Joni, Joni has certification in champagne. On, yes, I girls. love it. And so I'm not really a big, big bubbles person, but I do love, I do love the above uh, rosé. Yes. I, mean, I love that one. And then kind of an in inexpensive one that I like is um, the one by Chandon too. I yeah. like that one too. So those are kind of like, now mind you, because I don't really drink a lot of sparkling, I drink more commotion, commercial, mm -hmm. but as I'm starting to study, I'm starting to get a little bit more into the growers of champagne and just trying to learn a little bit more at the same time. Yeah. But I'm not a really big bubbles girl. That that hits me like when people say they don't like chocolate. I'm just like, 
Yeah, I, I fail to understand. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I know, I know, I know. I'm, 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 I'm again. I'm, 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 I'm outnumbered here. The bubble chicks. So. Yeah, I, I am just always like, what? Like, how is that possible? No, yeah, I absolutely. Um, I'll, yeah, if I could, I would drink. That would definitely just be what I drink if I wanted to just drink something every day, but. Um, yeah, this is actually, I had bought a couple bottles of his, um, I'm going to grab these two bottles. One second. Okay. You know what? You know what? Um, I was going to tell you, Tish, that Samuel Roberts, I actually bought it a couple days ago and I opened it last night after work, um, uh -huh. and was doing my, going through my tastings for it. Um, and at first I was like, I hate it. Mm -hmm. I absolutely okay. hate it. Be but that's because I'm not a sweet, I don't like mm -hmm. sweet wine for the most part. But then I had to put my educator hat back on and walk through it. And I don't think that it's, it's not a bad wine. Um, the acidity in the wine was very good. So it, it balanced really nicely with the sweet. But what I wanted to say mm -hmm. is that for the price point, I think it's a very, I think it's a good wine for the price point. The quality is really good. Yep. And I also think it's a crowd pleaser. Yep. And if you want it, you see it, you better buy it because they are sold out at the winery. Which They're wine is sold, and it's sold out at Total Wine? Because I went online today and I was like, man, it's sold out. Yeah, they're oh, sold so out and they don't have yeah. any at the winery. There's none. Where is, yeah. what wine is this? Um, Tisha's favorite, the Samuel Roberts. <sighs> so she said she actually tried it. You, you, you did a tasting with it last night, right? Yeah, I tasted through it last <laughs> night. Yeah. And it's really sold out. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I'm going to have to try that one. So this is um, one of the rosés of, I do this wrong, by John Lennon. Yes. Yeah. And so I had the other one, the still rosé of his during his virtual tasting this summer. And then I saved the sparkling one. Yep. Oh. I enjoyed the steel. And it's actually really good. I really did enjoy the steel. I because once again, me in the bubbles, me in the bubbles. Right, right. But the still was good. I really did enjoy the still. I yes. really did enjoy the still. Because we know that celebrities are all getting into wine now, have all their wine labels. And sometimes I'm a little reluctant. Like, yeah. But yeah, I, I know I am. You see my side eye? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. My side eye. So I was like, what is he doing? But. <laughs> This is now, I like the still and I like his sparkling. So, but I also wanted to just let people know about Whispering Angel. Yep, I like mm -hmm. that one too. That's one, this is one of my favorites. And I actually, yes, didn't know. I started to read more about it because actually this is kind of what put Rosé on the map in the US. Uh, when this started, this is a Provence Rosé. When they started importing this to the US is when Rosé really yeah. took off here. Yeah. That one and um, the Miraval, Miraval by Brad and Jolie. Yeah. Those yeah. two, definitely. So I've been drinking this one for a while and I didn't know that's like was such a big influence on Rosé in America. Um, yeah, like millions and millions of bottles, they said, like that get exported here every year. So this could be a good one again for people to start with if you're trying to just so look for a typical price point and you can find it any and yeah, everywhere. everywhere. I bought it from public today. Yeah, and probably any you can find that pretty much any and everywhere. And then I like the Miraval. Miraval was one that, um, funny enough, my first time trying Miraval was with um, with Three Parks Wine. Sarah had it in one of the oh, yeah. and and um, and I was just like, I love this. And then of course she had a good write up. And then that was probably one of my first probably celebrity um, type wines that I tried, and I was just like, okay, I really like this. Right, you know, right. So from time to time, I still will grab a bottle of Miraval. It just kind of depends on where I'm going, if you're going to visit someone, you know, something like that. That has a story to it. I love I love a wine with the story. So sometimes, even if I'm taking it as a gift or a hostess gift for something, you know, that has a story. So you you, you can- I like the story it. about it. Yeah. Tell us a story about it, Tisha, real quick. Well, no, just the, well, just the fact from a celebrity perspective. Who's a celebrity? Like, I'm like, like drawing a blank. Who's a well, celebrity? Miraval, that, that was uh, Angelia, Angelia Jolie and Brad Pitt. Yeah. Oh, so I don't know if they are still involved because okay. they're not still involved. Right. So, <laughs> I don't know. John, do you know their involvement still with, with Miraval? Yeah, they still, well, they, oh, they own it. So they I bought the land, that. they bought the winery. Now they're not the winemakers. Yes, right. I do know that. You know, 
but they um from what i understand they um were interested intricate in going there and tasting it Mm -hmm. um and kind of helping the winemaker as far as what they liked and what um because i mean they do have an american palate if you will so um that's about as much as i know i know that i believe you know they're divorced now so i don't know (laughs) what that's but um, from what I understand, yeah, they, they were very um, involved in it. They didn't just slap their name on it. They were involved in the quality and the from the from the beginning to the end. So yeah. I've had plenty of times, and I don't think, and I follow them. Sadly, I'm a celebrity type person. I don't think I knew that. That's oh a- yeah, and yeah, that's why you said when you said Whisper and Angel, I said, oh yeah, and Miraval because oh. everyone purchased it because it was Brad Pitt and Brad Pitt and Angelique Jolie. Got it. Got it. I'll think of that the next time I'm drinking it. Awesome. Well, thank you, ladies, for your recommendations. Anything you would tell people who are, again, like just getting started in the whole rosé, drinking, just jump right in. Those are great recommendations. Somebody's asking. So I'm going to have um, you guys send me the ones that you mentioned, and I'll post in the comments for people uh, to, to do that. And I actually have some trivia. I'm trying to see how many people are on. So some people will get these because, like, Charles will know the answer. Um, Nisha, I know Charles can't answer these questions. Um, You can't play Charles. You can't play trivia, but I have some gift cards and I found some cute stuff. Like, I love this glass. It says, I'm not drinking alone. I'm social distancing. Oh, that's cute. (laughs) Um, I have some gift cards and they have like all these little things on Amazon, like games, rosé games and, um, so I was going to do some trivia with people just based on my blog posts and stuff that we talked about. I will try and see if anybody answers. Charles says, okay, no worries. Um, so as we talked about at the beginning, what determines, the <laughs> what determines the color of rosé wines? Let's see. I can't tell who's watching, so we'll see if anybody answers. Right. <laughs> I have all these trivia questions. If not, I will. Uh, well, we'll go through them. We'll have fun. We can go through them. And you can just send me the gifts. It'll be fine. Send you the gifts. Right. I have a wine tumbler. Um, do you guys use these Yeti glass tumblers? These Yeti? I discovered these. And everyone says they're great in terms of keeping the wine cool. Oh, I mean, I have a couple of but they're not Yeti, but I have a couple of them. Oh, we have an answer. Um, so... We have two grapes and grape skins. I think I'm going to go with grape skins. What do you guys think? What was, wait, what was the question? Um, what determines the color of uh, the red wine? Uh, red wine. The skins, definitely. Yeah. I'll go with the skins. So Sharice Miller got that one right. So Sharice. Sharice. Yay, girl. If you oh. can uh, send me a message uh, with your address so I can send you a a gift. Okay. <laughs> the next question I have is name one of the methods in which rosé wine is made. So I think we talked about two. The third one we didn't talk about, but there's actually three methods that are used to make rosé wine. Um, so let's see if people are paying attention and we'll give the answer for that one. Um, <laughs> Charisse is like, yay! <laughs> Um, yeah, it's amazing. I really have become intrigued by it to the point where I have like two books now on rosé wines. Mm-hmm. Um, so I find it interesting. <laughs> and I love the taste. So I have, I have a trusting while we're waiting. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's great to show that. So yeah, for anyone, and the link is in my blog post as well. But yeah, Charles Springfield, if you want to dive deeper into the rosé world, that's a great book to have. Um, it is. Yeah, Charles is gonna. Um, Charles is coming on um, the perfect sip with me in September. Oh, he's busy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And you can always catch Charles over there on chat and sip. I know. And Charles is oh, on that's 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 and he's available for hire. So anyone needs a uh, per- a personal song, right. he's available. He's not yeah. free, but he's very good. <laughs> And he should all your virtual wine tastes and education and all that good stuff. So that's our that is our buddy. So we shouting you out, friend. We shouting you out. <laughs> so Charmaine gave an answer of direct pressing. Um, 
I'm gonna take a sip on that. I'll let you ladies decide. I know. Uh, Glenda said skin contact. Oh, kind of ones we haven't talked about, right? Yeah. So um, there's. I don't know if I should say the three, but there's one that we haven't really we haven't talked about at all. About yes. So I'm gonna come back to that question. Let's see. What's this is easy. Um, the most famous region of the world for rosé wine. This is oh, very sure. easy. That was easy. Get the, get the tapping. Get the tapping. Y'all got yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, somebody tried to answer to that because that we said that like twenty times on this <laughs> so far. So, what's the most famous region in the world? So, I think I may give the last one to Anne because that is technically Anne said blending, which is definitely one of the methods that we talked about. Um, so the other method that we did, there's maceration, which is what we talked about, just like, you know, having the stems and the grapes sit with the juice and removing the juice to make rosé. Um, come on, chime in. You need a more specific. We're in France. Nope, nope, that's not it. Where do most of the wines that we talked about? It starts with a P. It starts with a P. That makes like the great quality rosés. If you're starting out, this is where you should buy rosé wine from. Platinum standard for rosé. Yes, the best expression of it. <laughs> um, Platinum. But Anne just said blending, which is yes. So Yolanda, oh no, the first part. Yes, no. Charmaine said it first. Provence. Yes. Okay. So Charmaine Thomas, you got that one right. So please send your address to me. And um, Anne just got the other question about what is the one of the methods. So Anne, please send me your address. So the three methods are maturation that we talked about, blending, which is not done commonly, but it's done, um, especially like in Champagne region of France. And the other one, I cannot say this right, Sagne or the blend method. Sonier. How do you say that? Sagne. <laughs> Um, which is used from what I read at least commonly like in Napa and Sonoma in which so you start off the same way as if you're going to make red wine but then some of the juice not all of the juice is removed from that big container that has all the grapes and juice to stem and just some of the juice is removed and that's used to make the rosé and so that makes the red wine more concentrated because you've taken off some of the juice and then you use that juice to make rosé so in California they do that with um, Cabernet Sauvignon. When they're making that, they may, may remove some of the juice to make a Cab Sauv uh, Rosé. So those are the three methods that I came across. What do you guys think? Any other ones that you know of? Those are the three I came across. Well, that, those are the four. Huh? That's, four, that's three, four, right? Yeah. That's oh, that's it. three. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So... Make sure the three people I called out send me your addresses. I do have some more prizes. Um, oh, so Glenda said, yes, but Anne said it before you, Glenda. Sorry. Oh. Anne said blending before Glenda. Okay. So we have that one. Okay. Tell me, um, name a black owned rose wine label. And we've mentioned at least one during this we've call. One. <laughs> huh? Yeah, we've mentioned at least one. So name a black person that owns uh not just a wine label, that one that makes rose wines. Yeah, we've actually mentioned at least two in the last 10 minutes. So yes, Yolanda got it right. Love drunk. Yep, Andre Houston Mac. That is correct. <laughs> so Yolanda said, need your address. Let's see. So that's- So Yolanda, Yolanda, you got you one. There you go. Yeah. All right. We definitely have enough gifts for at least one more. And okay. Yep. Yeah. So Tish held up a bottle of a very dark rosé. Uh, yes, Charisse Brown Estate does uh, make rosé also. Actually, I'm, I just ordered a- uh, a few bottles of that. Have you guys had that one from Brown Estate? The the Beetlejuice. The Beetlejuice. Yeah, I haven't had it yet. I've had it before. I had oh, it before okay. too. I had it at the wine. I had it actually at the winery. I okay. Like the white. I like the white. Okay. Johnny, what are your thoughts? Did you? Did you? Do you like the Beetlejuice? No, 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 no. Um, 
Wait, it's the. It's, it's called um, Doopy 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 Conqueror. Oh no, it's a Doopy. This is a Doopy. I thought they. No, I think they did. No, they, a Beetlejuice's one. son is a different. I think it's a different um clone, if I'm not mistaken. But I but think the Doopy Conqueror is the one that I, I, I had that the I Beetle like. I think they did Beetlejuice, and I think they turned around and did the Beetlejuice in Rose too. And then they did yeah. the Doopy, so it's two. Mm -hmm. I think they got. I think they've done two before. I think. Yeah. Don't, I just saved it and now I can't even find the name of it. But yes, they do make a, a rosé that I just saved last night because I told myself, I just ordered from there and then I'm ordering more. Um, but yes, that is a correct. <laughs> you know, I'm, a member. I'm a member. So, you know, I'm, I'm always I'm always waiting on something from Brown like this at the door. Like Yes, I was a member for a few years and I had collected so many bottles and then I stopped. But now I might do it again because now I'm just like ordering wine from them every few months whenever I run out. Um, cause yeah, they're, yeah. Just did you get to pick up your Chardonnay yet? Cause it's, no, I have, no, I haven't. Um, I'm actually, I think I'll be in Atlanta at the top of September. Okay. So okay. I have a few bottles on chill in Atlanta for me. <sighs> and then I believe that they will be coming into Texas with the house of Brown <sighs> in the okay. September time frame. Perfect. Yeah. I got more bottles of that for those of you listening. So Brown Estate now has House of Brown and they have a new Chardonnay under that label and it is so good. It's perfect for summer. It's on oak. It's just fresh, fruity. Love it. So if you're, if they have it in your area, go pick some of that up because it's really good. I don't good. think it's, because um, uh, I, I have two bottles at home. Wait, I, if I can ever get home, that's if number one. In Chicago? <laughs> yeah, if I can ever get home, I can get it. Uh, I can drink it, but I don't think they're going to be ready for distribution until I think someone said November. Right. So you, they're doing it through local, their local vendors versus uh -huh. like their website. So they said you won't be able to order from their website for a while. Okay. So, but like local wine shops, they're doing like. But House you know. of Brown, you can order the House of Brown, but you can do it by, um, you have to do it by four, eight and 12. They're not uh, all the uh, bottles. So you can, can actually order it. Um, and per my last discussion with them, they'll be coming. They were supposed to come this month to Texas. Texas. They're trying to launch in Texas in September, yeah. but they they call it pandemic, you know, situation. So, yeah. and they had Texas and then some other states and stuff wrapped in. So, like you say, Johnny, it may be November by the time it makes it, but they they're trying. They're trying to get it out to yeah. the mass. So Atlanta good. once again making me miss Atlanta. Woo -woo. <laughs> but that's fine. Though. I'm gonna come pick up my two bottles. <laughs> and it is the Beetlejuice. That's the one I just ordered. Okay. Yeah, of the Brown Estate Rose. Okay. Yep. Okay. Well, the last question I have is so Tish just showed it again. This is a very dark rose that's heavy, dry. Um, some people consider it more to be more of a red wine than a rose. So name that. It starts with a T. It's in my blog post also. Um, I did mention it there as well. Yep, Tish has it up there. So that's the last question I have. Um, I'm sitting here looking at all this, all the different bottles of rosé I bought. <laughs> we'll be drinking rosé through the end of August for sure. I, I, I hope he'll be rosé because he's going to be drinking some rosé. Yes. Well, he, no, I don't think he drinks rosé, actually. He'll drink red wine. He doesn't even really like white wine. Um, he's more of a, you know... Vodka, whiskey. Spirits, man. He's a oh, spirit. Yeah. Body. yeah. But he will, he started drinking more wine because of me. So, um, but like white wine and rosé, I don't. <laughs> oh, so you will be busy drinking. Yeah, well, my cousin actually uh, loves all types of wine too. So she'll, um, she'll help me out with these. So, all right. Does anyone have any guesses? Do we have any guesses? Let's see. It starts with a T is what, um, I'm looking for here. Da, 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 da. Anyone, anyone? While we're waiting, tell people again where they can find you. So Tish, what's your social media handles? I am Tish Around Town, straight across all social media handles. IG, okay. Facebook, and my website is Tish Around Town too. I try to keep it simple. Simple. And your series is starting back? It'll be starting back um, in September. I'm taking a little summer break. Yeah. Uh, funny enough, I got emails going out and trying to get some fun stuff planned. Um, and and it'll be it'll be September time frame, and it's called Chat and Sip. 
And it actually, we have Charles is probably still hanging out with us. And it actually features Charles too, as like I call him my, you know, partner in wine, my co-host. He says that, um, you know, he's my Eggman man. So <laughs> I have all of these different descriptions, but Charles is also a part of Chad and Sip. And he has a segment that he talks about just uh, what's on his mind about wine and share some wine wisdom. At the same time, that's the time when people can come with their burning questions about wine or what they saw this week or any questions or anything like that. So mm -hmm. uh, that's awesome. Perfect. Oh, we have a guest. Nope, nope, that's not it. Oh, we okay. it. Okay. it does I'm gonna, the tea. Should I let it? <laughs> I'm going to put it up just for a sec. It's a region in France. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Who can type the fastest? Well, who, who can, can type the fastest? Say, whoever doesn't get that with the label. Who can type oh, the fastest? Can you tell people again where they can find you? So um, I'm at uh, Seek and Sip on Facebook and IG, S E E K A N D S I P okay. Travel. Um, of course, we, again, we travel the world searching for the perfect sip. My uh, webpage, we are redesigning my webpage as we speak. Oh, so awesome. if you go on there, you're going to go to a landing page and join my email list because then you'll get first dibs on my trip offerings, um, our events, when the whenever we get off punishment. Punishment, right. COVID. <laughs> We'll start uh, kind of bopping around the different uh, cities in the country and, of course, around the world, uh, searching for the perfect set. So on Sunday, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, we are going to restart our series this Sunday. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, uh, we uh, I partner with different friends of mine in the industry. We go through um, how to perfect your palate, how to make different cocktails um, using different brands. Um, and it's always a really fun time. So I like gifts. I give away gifts too, but we give away a lot of good knowledge as well. So come on over. You're welcome. Awesome. Awesome. Oh my God. <laughs> Can you put it in the info in chat? Um, <laughs> I may give you uh this is, to give them another question. I was gonna say, all right, so I'm gonna switch that question. Um should we just tell them what it was? I'll tell you what it was. And then I'm going to give one last question. Okay. Yeah, she was trying to, um, yes. Tavel, that's what it is. Yes. <laughs> that was hard. I'm sure that was hard. So um, I'll do one more question and then we will um, give out the last gift. So, yo, the Instagram info. Um, so, yeah, Seek and Sip Travel is uh, mm -hmm. Joni. So she has it. Is it A and D? Uh -huh. uh -huh. And Tish around town. Okay, let's try name a good food or cheese pairing for rosé wine. We didn't talk a lot about that, but if you can tell me something that you think goes well with rosé wine. Are you talking to us or the guests? Oh, for the guests. Oh, okay. I'm <laughs> I know you're just like, okay, let me, let's go, you know. I mean, that yeah, last okay. <laughs> just chime in because for whoever she gets the most, I think she gets one, two, three, four. Yeah, she may just get a gift because Does it um, make she gets so much. Does it make sense though? She can't say just any old thing. <laughs> let, let's hear. Salmon. I want to hear. I want to hear. I want to hear. Well, salmon's a good pairing. So I think I'm going to give her that. Yeah, that works. Yep. That is a good pairing. Okay. For rosé. So as we mentioned, it depends again on what type of rosé you're drinking to think about in terms of the pairing lighter with lighter foods, heavier rosés will go with some of your heavier foods. So um, yes, goat cheese also. Absolutely. My favorite, oh, great, great. My favorite cheese. The goat, What's cheese. That? the goat cheese is my favorite cheese to go with um, <laughs> to go with rosé. It's one of my favorites. Yes. I actually bought some that I'm going to have tonight um, myself actually with it. I love goat cheese. Glenda, yeah, Brie will actually go with it. Gregory, um, hey, Gregory, thanks for tuning in. Well, we're going to wrap up. Again, I am Nadine from The Sophisticated Life. You can find my blog, sophisticatedlife.com. I'm on Facebook, obviously, at The Sophisticated Life. And my other social media handle is The Sophist Life at Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest. So I'm going to put this on YouTube, on IGTV. So um, if you miss any portion of this, you can rewatch it. 
I want to thank the ladies for joining me for Rosé Happy Hour. Oh, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate that. Oh, and Gouda with walnut. Ooh, that sounds yummy. Charmaine. That sounds good, too. Yeah. I eat, like, every cheese with, like, yeah. I could eat cheese for dinner. Just pour some wine, give me cheese, crackers, some honey on it, some nuts. I'll eat the whole plate of that. Um, and, Jordan, you make a lot of uh, charcuterie boards, right? Yeah. Don't you want to those? Yeah, that was my um, private rosé event. We did a, a charcuterie board with paired with rosé wine. It was amazing. Oh. Well, smoked salmon is my jam with um, rosé. Oh, love it. So you guys can try that. Some smoked salmon with Honey it. Honey smoked salmon, to be specific. Oh, excuse me. Oh, what's up on now? I know, right? <laughs> you fancy. 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 <laughs> I'm not able to stay for the whole thing. I know you also have to get back to work. But thank you, ladies, so much for joining me. Um, I'm sure people are going to run out and buy some bottles of rosé after this, which is great. <laughs> Thanks for the Thank invite. You. This has been fun. This is a great way to yeah. wind down my wins. <sighs> yes, yes. Since we can't be out and about, you know, uh -huh. at least we could be here together and hang out and drink and have some fun. So... Thank you guys again for joining. Uh, yeah, thank Yay. you so much for having me. Thank you guys. All right, I'll Yay. see you guys. Have a good one. Yes, have a good evening, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Yes, cheers. 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 <laughs> Joni, cheers for you, honey. Cheers yes, for you. Thank you. Well, yes, thank you. Thank you for being on the front line, and thank you, Nadine, for being on the front line, too. Oh, thank, thank you. you. So thank, thank you, guys. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you, Nadine. Bye, ladies. All right, I'll bye see bye. you guys. Bye-bye.